Good morning. Happy Friday. Although I'm sure some of you, if you're like me, are struggling a little bit this morning with it being the anniversary of um, September 11th. And if you're also like me, you know exactly where you were that day and you could probably give the account second by second of how those events unfolded. For me, I was in Florida. My kids were little, we were on fall break. Navy was only two and she had a really bad ear infection. And our only goal for that day was to get that poor thing some relief. So we were on the phone dialing doctors in the area to see if somebody could see her. And then we turned on the television and we saw the plane hit the building and we watched the, the, the news person telling us the devastation that was happening. And, and I knew in that moment, everything as I knew it was, was different. So I took the boys, Brock and Stone, down to the beach so that I could just get them away from the news. And, and in doing so, when I walked out onto the sand, I realized that I, I think I was the only one that knew what had happened because everybody was, was still laughing and, and, and running around and playing frisbee and jumping over the waves. And I, I was envious of them because where I stood, they didn't yet and they didn't know. But they would, as time went on, I watched as the news spread and I watched as people fled up to their rooms to see the news for themselves or they were huddled around radios on their blankets and their towels and slowly their lives changed just like mine in that instant. And one of the things I remember was how people kept saying, where was God? Where in the world did that God go on that day? How could God let something like this happen? And then, then I came across this writing in the couple of years after that. And, and, and it's so powerful, I wanna read it to you. But it's called, Meet Me in the Stairwell. And it is, it is not words of me. These words are, are written as if they are coming from God. So I hope that you hear them in that purity. These are not my words. Imagine they are from um, God. You will never forget where you were when you heard the news on September 11th, 2001. Well, neither will I. I was on the 110th floor in a smoke-filled room with a man who called his wife to say goodbye. I held his fingers steady as he dialed. I gave him the peace to say, honey, I'm not going to make it, but I, it's okay, I'm ready to go. I was with his wife when he called as she fed breakfast to their children. I held her up as she tried to understand his words as she realized that he wasn't coming home that night. I was in the stairwell of the 23rd floor when a woman cried out to me for help. I've been knocking on the door of your heart for 50 years, I said. Of course I will show you the way home. Believe in me now. I was at the base of the building when the priest ministering to the injured and devastated souls. I took him home to tend to his flock in heaven. He heard my voice and answered. I was on all four of those planes in every seat with every prayer. I was with the crew as they were overtaken. I was in the very hearts of the believers there comforting and assuring them that their faith had saved them. I was in Texas, Virginia, California, Michigan, and I was in Afghanistan. I was standing next to you when you heard the terrible news. Did you feel me? I want you to know that I saw every face. I knew every name, though not everyone knew me. Some met me for the first time on the 86th floor. Some sought me with their last breath. Some couldn't hear me call to them through the smoke and the flames. Come to me this way. Take my hand. Some chose for the final time to ignore me, but I was there. 
You were not in the tower that day. You may not know why. If you were there in that explosive moment in time, would you have reached for me? September 11th, 2001 was not the end of the journey for you, but someday your journey will end and I will be there for you as well. I will be there in your final moments. So one thing that came out of my, um, my experience of that day and the days that followed were that I made a vow to myself that I would do my best not to live with any regret from one day to the next. So many lives were lost that day. So many people did not get to say their final I love you or their final I'm sorry or their final goodbye. So I wanted to always try to live my life in a way that, that there would be no regrets if that happened again. And I was one of those people or someone that I knew. So on the anniversary, all of these years later, I still think I'm doing the best that I, that I can. And I want their lives to continue to mean something. So I have this analogy, bear with me. But have you watched the movie, The Grinch? where the Grinch goes into all of those houses and, and steals their Christmas trees, their presents, their big spreads of food. He steals their stockings and all of the candy and the treats that are in them. He's trying to still steal their joy, their Christmas joy and the love that comes on such a, an important day. But something else happened when the Grinch took all of that stuff up to his cave and he waited to listen to them wail and mourn and grieve. But something beautiful happened. This song came floating up from their village all the way up and it touched the Grinch's heart. They weren't angry. They weren't devastated. They stood hand in hand in a circle of love and the joy and they sang the most beautiful song, The Grinch Failed. I believe those people that flew those planes were doing the same thing, stealing our joy, stealing our love, but it didn't happen. On the days that followed, 9-11 people, those people that had never gone to church or not in years went back to church. Those people that, that had not prayed were, were dropping to their knees and praying. They didn't win. We were loving each other in ways we had never done before. We were reaching out to loved ones and strangers, pulling together in love. Now, do I think we've let a lot of that go since then? Ab absolutely, I do. So on this day, rather than grieve the loss, let's try to re-grasp re the events of September 12th. The love and the compassion that we had for each other, reaching out to people loving again in a way that we had forgotten how to do. All of those deaths, don't let it be for nothing. Let us remember that. Let's pray. Gracious God, we come to you today on a day that is hard to remember even those that were too young to understand what happened, know through our stories and our grief and our wants of something better. God, be with us as we all go through this day in our minds and be with those people that were touched specifically by those events, those people that were there, those people who lost loved ones. 
help them walk through this day of remembering. And again, let everyone know that we still survived. We still have joy and love for each other. And this we ask in your son's name today, God, amen. So blessings on your day. Bye.